following Blog Talk Radio broadcast is a presentation of DTRTWrestling.com, your source for pro wrestling and mixed martial arts news. Going live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey guys, it's me, your host for the evening, Vanessa, better known as Great Love 91 on Twitter. Feel free to follow me, and I will, as always, give you a follow back. Now, today is June 22nd, 2014, and it happens to be a Sunday, which means today is Sunday Gun Day, and that is fairly appropriate because my guest this evening is the one, the only. Jessamine the Gun Duke. What's up, Vanessa? How are you? What's up? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Jessamine? I'm fantastic. I'm sitting outside enjoying some sunshine and a rest day, and I just got some coffee, and I really couldn't be any happier right now. (laughs) Sounds like a good day. I love coffee. Can't never go wrong with coffee. Well, first of all, I want to tell you thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule and for actually doing this interview on your rest day. Uh, it means a lot to me and everyone here at DTRT Wrestling, so thank you. No problem. Happy to, happy to do it and be a part of the show. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, the first thing that I kind of want to do with this interview is give people uh, some facts about you that might not know so much about you, you know, the people that are living under a rock, because we've been covering you for a while now, so if they don't know about you, shame on them, but uh, I'm going to throw some facts out to the world, and if I forget anything that you feel is mention- like notable mentions, uh, feel free to just chime in and add things if you'd like. All right. So, um, before you actually started fighting, you actually had... Uh, some modeling experience, which I think is pretty cool. Some people may not know that. So there's that. Uh, you did. Uh, you started fighting amateur MMA in 2010. You competed in organization stuff at, uh, such as Absolute MMA and Tough Enough, where you actually captured uh, titles in both those organizations. You made your pro debut in 2012 when you signed to Invicta FC. You were a competitor on the Ultimate Fighter Season 18, first season to feature women, and you were a member of Team Rousey. You made your UFC debut November 30th of 2013 by defeating Peggy Morgan, and your fight record is currently 3-1. and one. Those are all the facts I got. Hopefully I did good there. Yeah, I think you nailed it pretty much. That's uh, That's kind of me in a nutshell. <laughs> Yeah, I win. That's good. I'm glad I didn't forget any, like, potent, important facts. So that makes me very happy. And you, my friend, have a fight coming up, which is great news for members of the Gun Club. Your fight is scheduled for July 16th, 2014 at UFC Fight Night, and it's going to be in New Jersey, Atlantic City, New Jersey, and your opponent is Wesley Smith. How do you feel about that fight coming up? I am super excited about that fight, actually. Um, as soon as – I wasn't actually planning on fighting until August or September. Um, that was kind of the timeline I was given and what I was expecting. And uh, and when when Sean Shelby wrote me and asked me if I wanted that fight, I mean, I took it right away and uh, was, was excited. I mean, I've known of Leslie for a while. We, we fought together uh, in Invicta. So I've seen her fight live quite a few times, and – uh, have met her quite a few times, and I know what kind of competitor she is and what kind of fighter she is, and I think that uh, that fight is definitely uh, going to be an exciting one, and it's one that, as a fighter, I mean, I'm I'm excited to to be a part of because it's 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 going to be good. Uh, so I took it right away, and um, you know, I'm I'm stoked. Awesome, and I, I, you know, I speak for everyone else here too that we're stoked as well. And I was actually like fairly surprised too because, like you said, your timeline was to go back in September, and you know, you just had a fight in April, and now you're coming back like super, super fast. It's like what two, three months off your last fight. So, do you feel that that's going to be beneficial to you coming back so quickly? Yeah, 
I, I do actually, um, because I mean, I had a, a pretty decent break over Christmas and uh, you know, in the winter and stuff and before I fought again in April, I think it was about six and a half months or something actually between fights, which is a little long for me, honestly. I like to stay a little more active than that. Um, and the camp was really long and drawn out and you know, by the end of that camp I was just exhausted. It it ended up being about twelve weeks altogether and um and this fight, I mean, I just came off of a of a fight camp. I'm in shape. I had a little break, but I turned right around and, you know, I have about five weeks to prepare, which is perfect. Um, it uh, it kind of reminds me of the amateur days when you just, you know, you took a fight and in a few weeks you just, you went and handled business. Um, there's not some long drawn out process of promotion, media, and, you know, just months of anticipation and um, it just, it, it really does wear on you. Um, so it, it's nice to have it be uh kind of a quick turnaround and, and I can just jump right into to my camp and get into the serious stuff and um and and be ready to perform in just a few weeks. So it's perfect actually. I'm I'm in great shape and my weight is already on. It's not gonna be an issue, you know, having to try and plan out a weight cut or anything like that. Everything's right where it should be and uh it's just a matter of fine tuning myself and my game plan uh over the next few weeks and, and getting ready for a for a fight. That's awesome. That's great news. That makes me feel better about the whole situation, too, because as a fan, I was like, that's so quick. But knowing that you feel good about it makes me feel good about it. So we're all looking forward to that fight. Um, Speaking of strategies, is there any, like, specific strategies going up against Leslie Smith that, you know, you and Edmund had worked with uh, to pretty much better your game that you think will help you? Uh, You know, Leslie, Leslie's a, uh, she's, an exciting fighter and she's an aggressive fighter and she uh she throws a lot of volume in her fight she it, she usually wins by just outworking her opponents and uh just pushing the pace more and i know that that the thing i'm going to have to do mo- most is you know not let that happen and outwork her um so just making sure i'm in really good shape and uh you know i've got my head right to be the aggressive intense fighter that I know that I am capable of being, uh very in your face and uh just be ready to fight bell to bell and, and not stop, uh and, and you know, make sure to push the pace on her and not let her do that to me. Uh is is pretty much just the you know, the basis of it all. I mean it's a fight, you know, anything can happen, the fight can go anywhere and because I do know Leslie, I know that she's happy to take the fight anywhere. I've seen you know, I've seen her fight everywhere. She's comfortable on her feet she's comfortable in the clinch she'll go to the ground if you want to go to the ground she'll uh she's she's just happy to fight and so it's not so much like oh you need a specific strategy or a certain anything like that to beat someone like her you just have to be prepared to outwork her and uh she's definitely not an easy one to do that with but uh i'm i feel confident that i'll be prepared to do that so i uh that's why i'm sure i just i know it's going to be exciting i know that i know what kind of fight this is going to be i know what kind of fight i'm getting into and uh, I, I think it's going to be one that the fans are, are really going to enjoy. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. It's funny because um, I looked at the date, and it said July 16th, and I kind of was like, oh, no, simply because I actually might be in Big Bear uh, doing motivational speaking for another side project that I do called Be More Heroic. And I'm like, I hope they don't need me that day because I really don't want to miss this fight. So I'm just like <laughs> crossing my fingers that uh, things don't conflict because I'm just like, no, please don't need me that day. So we'll see. Hopefully You're not going to want to miss it. I promise you that. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, man, I can't miss this. It'd be bad of me as a fan if I did. So I'm going to hopefully just cross my fingers and hope that my schedule, um, you know, like doesn't conflict with anything. Um, Me too. I'll be crossing my fingers for you. For sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Another thing that I kind of wanted to touch on is, do you feel like this fight, of course every fight is important, but do you feel like this one has a little bit of more importance, especially for both of you, since both of you kind of, you know, came off losses, and do you feel like this is kind of like a redemption fight in a sense? Yeah, I mean, anytime you fight and you lose, um, you you always want to immediately. The if, I've always said, if you're a fighter, as soon as you lose, the, the first thing you want to do is you want to fight again and, and you know try to right things and uh, and get back on the the winning track. Because unfortunately, you know, most people only remember your last fight; they don't remember anything before that. Um, so it's 
it's important to me, you know, as a fighter to go out there and, and put on a performance that, you know, my fans deserve and not uh, and, and nothing less. But even just career-wise, yeah, it's definitely an important fight. Um, the, everybody knows the UFC is not a place to uh, to to try and too many hard lessons learned. You uh, you want to stay on top when you're there because. Uh, your job situation can change very quickly if you don't. So I know it's important for both of us and that she's going to come in motivated, but I am as well. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely important career-wise. But like you said, every fight, truthfully, is that important. Uh, and that's something I've learned uh, over my career, that every fight is that important. Every fight is the most important fight of your career, and you should treat it that way because um, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Um, so it's important to go out there and, and perform your best and uh, put on a good fight and be entertaining and uh, and keep the fans happy and, and win. Definitely. And, like, I don't mean to be completely biased or anything, but uh, I don't know if you remember when I posted that article uh, on DTRTWrestling.com when I said the Jets movement lives on. And I really do think it's uh, super early in your career and you still have a lot to prove. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, I really do think that somewhere down the road you're going to be a threat to run the Rousey's title. And that's me being completely 100% honest. That is that is the goal. That is the you know what I've always said since the first day I took my first amateur fight was I, my eventual goal was I wanted to be the the best 135 pound female fighter on the planet i mean i want to i don't have aspirations to just be okay uh you know i want to be the best and i want to be remembered as one of the best and uh you know yes it is early in my career but you know this is the foundation this is uh this is the time you know that to start stepping up your game and um start proving to everyone that i am that you know it's one thing to say it but um, as I get more experience, it's time to start proving it, and I know that, and I'm aware of it, and I'm ready to start doing it. It's uh, it's really it really is fighting such a mental challenge, and uh, you know, making sure that your head's right is, is for the fight is just as important as making sure your cardio is on, and you know, your technique is good, and all that. You know, it's 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 much a mental fight as it is a physical fight, and uh, I I feel like. As time passes and I, you know, I, I kind of learn and grow as a fighter that I'm understanding that better and it's going to make me perform better when I actually get in the cage. That's awesome stuff. And I speak for everyone that's listening and everyone on DTRT Wrestling that uh, we are happy to be a part of this journey with you. So it's good stuff. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. I actually have some fan questions and I actually got a lot of them and I had to pretty much pick and choose which ones I thought were decent, I guess you could say. But (laughs) before I get to fan questions, I have to get something very important out of the way because you have a birthday on Tuesday. So I wanted to be the first, or maybe not the first, because maybe someone else beat me to it, to wish you a happy birthday. uh, Aw, thank you. Myself and everyone here. So, Yeah. Happy birthday. Hope you have a good one. Thank you. I plan on it. I'm sure I'll be in the gym training. I actually think Tuesday I have some sparring plans, so it'll be uh it'll be a fun birthday and uh you are actually you're the first person, so congratulations. You <laughs> you got in on it first. Um, I win. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's good to hear. I'm, I'm glad. Um speaking of birthdays because I know you're probably, you know, trying to stay on weight and stuff. So does that mean that you can't have cake? Cause that's kind of unfair. You should have at least like one slice of cake for your birthday. No cake. I'll probably try to avoid cake on my birthday uh, and, and do what I've always done. Uh, the last three or four years that I've been fighting and competing, uh, it seems like I've almost always been in a fight camp. Uh, the only exception was last year. Actually, I was, we were filming the ultimate fighter. We were in the house when it was my birthday and uh, I just fought Raquel like the week before, so it was like a huge party. That's when that's when Rhonda came over to the house, and uh, they did had threw a big Armenian barbecue party, and Rhonda brought me ice cream and cake, and you know I did had I had a big epic birthday that time. That was the one exception. So, um, but this year it'll be kind of probably what it's always been uh, the last few years on my birthday, which is. I'm going to train, and I'm going to think about how I'm going to make up for it after this fight and uh, and celebrate my birthday properly um, with Fat Week after the fight, and um, it'll be okay. You know, it's that, that cake, 
you can have cake any time, you know. Uh, you you only get so many fights in, in the UFC, so I'll, I'll definitely relish that way more than I would some cake on Tuesday. And then you'll be celebrating twice because not only will it be your birthday, but I'm confident that you will be celebrating a win. So there you go. You get to celebrate two times as, as yep. much. It'll be twice as sweet. It's going to be good stuff. All right, so I'm going to get to the fan questions. I actually had to write them down so I wouldn't forget any of them. Um, the first question comes from William Weber and his hashtag, not hashtag, but his Twitter handle is at Bearded Wonder 4. He actually is a huge fan of you, so he requested that I make sure that I put his question on the list, so I did him that favor. I, I know exactly who he is. Us. Yeah, he's awesome. You know exactly who he is. There yeah. you go. He'll be happy to hear that because he's convinced <laughs> that you don't that you don't know that he exists. So there you go. I think you probably just made his day. <laughs> That's awesome. His uh, question for you is, what was your initial reaction from all the Twitter love and hate that happened the day after your fight? Like, what were you thinking when all of that was going down? It's, um, it's, it's hard, you know, because I, I do this because I love, I love to entertain people, you know, when, when you fight, like, I don't think fans sometimes realize how much we really do what we do for them. Um, it's, it's for, it's for the crowd reaction. It's for that entertain, it's for that entertainment value for them. You know, we, it's a, it's a live event. We show up to entertain you and, um, that's my number one goal is to walk out of there and have people want to talk about my fight and talk about me and, uh, you know, be excited about the performance I put on and and give them a memory, something that they'll remember and um, something that affected them somehow. And uh, it, it's, it sucks sometimes to, to hear such hate from people um, that, that you get on online sometimes, but you have to understand too, you know, as a fighter, you just, you just learn to, to, to deal with the ups and downs of it because for some people that is part of the fun, you know, having fighters to hate and having fighters to love. That's why they love the sport. And, you know, just because I happen to be on the wrong side of it, you know, I can't, you just have to not try not to take it too personal and realize that as long as, as long as they're talking about it and, uh, you know, then, then, then that's okay. But uh, you definitely, you know, you got there. You put your heart and your soul and your body on the line, and um, and and your your ego, you know, your reputation, your legacy, all that's on the on the line when you're out there. And uh, when you drop the ball, like I did in my last fight, and everybody gets to see it and uh, and and have a, an opinion on it. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard to read, but uh, it's usually counterbalanced for me by the the amount of love that I get and support because there are a lot of people out there that understand um and and they're fans of me because of me they're not a fan because I won my last fight they're a fan of me as a fighter because they like me as a fighter they like to watch me fight regardless and uh that's what makes it worth it that's why I say things when I'm like this is this is what makes it so worth it to to get up and put yourself through this when you have people out there that support you uh, through thick and thin, and and I'm um, I'm so thankful for those people because it it's it it makes it easy to go back into a fight camp. You know, it makes it easy to want to go back out there and do it again, and and uh, risk subjecting yourself to all this hate and nastiness uh, that the internet can sometimes throw at you. But it's uh, it's worth it when you find people out there that are so supportive and so awesome, just like William. And um, so it's you just have to not take it too personal, you know, and just realize it's part of it. It's part of the job and you know, there some people are going to love you and some people are going to hate you, and uh, you can't make everybody happy. I think that's an important lesson for life, and um, that's just the way it is. That's the that's the way the sport is, and I'm okay with that. Words of wisdom. That's awesome. I I definitely agree 100%. So that's cool. Um, next question comes from Chanel Hopkins via Facebook, and it's actually kind of like a two-part question. What is your favorite fight? in general, that you remember watching that you were, like, maybe got you hooked on MMA? And then what is your favorite fight of your career so far? Um, God, my fa- uh, favorite fight that I just remember watching, um, there's so many. There's so many that you I, it's almost impossible to pick just one fight. Um, it's more like 
just maybe fighters more than a certain fight. Like I have certain fighters that I just love watching and that got me hooked on the sport and got me hooked on, um, you know, being entertained and, um, than than maybe a particular fight. I mean, any of the great wars that that you can think of were always fun to watch and stuff, but um I wouldn't say any of them necessarily got me hooked on the sport. I remember I remember actually seeing uh when Gina Carano fought on on TV for the first time. I remember I had this realization that, you know, being a professional MMA fighter was an option. Um and I I remember thinking like, man, if she can do this, then I, I know I can do this. Um, and and that was that was kind of a moment, I guess. But I I remember uh, watching watching her fight and kind of watching those those walls be broken down and and doors being kicked open for us. Um, but I think I think probably my favorite fight of mine would would be my fight on the Ultimate Fighter against Raquel Pennington. Um, even though I lost that fight. It was uh, it was it was such a um, I don't know it really was a different performance for me you know I came out and 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 for the first time in my career I fought differently than I had before uh, I felt like I fought up to my potential as much as I could at that point where I was at and and you know where I was at at that point and what I was capable of I felt like it was the the most up to my potential that I've ever fought because if you ever talk to fighters they'll usually tell you that their performance when they actually fight is very rarely what they think they're fully capable of. They're always like, I could do better. I know I'm better than that. Even when they win, they're like, you know, I won, but I know I can do better. Um, We know ourselves. We know what we're capable of. uh, We know what we want to accomplish. But in that fight, I mean, I really walked away from it with my head held high because I felt like I had, you know, for where I was at the time, performed as close to my full potential as I, as I could, um, still not everything I had, but it, it was the most I'd achieved thus far in my career. So I was really happy with it. And, um, and it was the first time I, I had gotten pushed into, uh, an area in a fight where I'd never really experienced. And that was just being in this w- blood and guts war with someone and, you know, going from nearly being finished in the fight to, to like surging back at the end and like, finding your heart and, and, you know, digging deep and, and really pushing through. And, um, it was, it was very changing for me as a fighter that fight was. So it's, uh, it's important to me. And I, uh, I liked it. It was like a very significant time of growth in, in myself as a fighter. So it's, uh, it's an important one to me. It's funny. Cause I literally just watched that fight, rewatched it. I should say last night and posted it on our site. Cause I was like, this fight totally needs to be seen by people who haven't seen it yet. And yeah, I watched it last night. I was like, ah, oh, it's so amazing. That's kind of like one of the fights that got me hooked, believe it or not. I was like, this is some cool stuff. I like it. So yeah, yeah. that's one of my favorites too as well. It's pretty cool. Awesome. So Robert Bernardi via Facebook, he, his question is, and this is, something that I never knew, so I was like, I'm going to ask it because I never knew it either. Um, what is the reason behind your fight name, The Gun? Um, when I first started training, my coach actually gave it to me um, because my last name is Duke, and uh, he he felt like uh, there, there was a John Wayne, the Duke, uh, had a nephew uh, who fought, who boxed. And uh, his name was Tommy the Machine Gun. And he's like, you know what? If you ever fight, your nickname should be The Gun because your last name is Duke. And so there was, like, this connection that he thought was funny. And I was like, I don't know. I don't really like it. I don't know if I want to <laughs> my name. And, uh, and I was like, I don't really get it. It wasn't really a big deal. And then I took a fight, and I hadn't really thought of it. And I was like, all right, we'll just go with The Gun. We'll just write that down. And it stuck. And actually, for my first couple fights, I didn't really – I didn't really care for it, and then people people started like latching onto it, and I was like, you know what, this is kind of cool. Like, I can run with this. Uh, you know, I can I can make this work, and now I love it. You know, it's like I think that it, it's applicable in so many ways. It's applicable to, to my fight style. Um, I uh, I just I it decided I decided to stick with it, and uh, it's not exactly the most exciting story, but that is where it came from. <laughs> That's pretty cool because now, too, like, you have a bunch of hashtags for it, like the gun club, don't play with mm-hmm. guns. It works. 
It's great. Yeah. People just come up with stuff. It's like, okay, cool. And it's unique. I noticed, like, a lot of girls, like, it, there's the nicknames. I don't know. I just felt like it was kind of a unique nickname for a girl. Uh, and when I first started fighting, there weren't any others. But there's a few girls now with uh, gun-like names. They have, you know, some different ones. But uh, at the time, I was the only one, and I thought that was kind of cool. That's awesome. That That's pretty cool. I like hearing the story behind that. It's it's interesting. Um, okay, this next question actually comes from my best friend. Uh, his name is Aranya Hauer, and because of me, I guess you could say he's become a fan of the Four Horsewomen. So his question was, with the exception of Leslie Smith, if someone came up to you right now and told you you can fight any female fighter, past, present, or future, who would it be and why? God, um, it's, that's a, that's a, that's a hard one. I mean, immediately I would start thinking about, well, I would want, I would want the rematches against the, the people that I've lost against, you know, I, I want that rematch with Rocky from the show. I want a rematch with Betch, you know, um, you, uh, you want to right those wrongs you feel were done to you, so, um, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have anybody that I would be like, oh, I want to call them out. I want to fight them. I want to do it. I want to, I want to take the fights that are, you know, going to progress my career and help me grow as a fighter and, uh, you know, and entertain the fans. So, um, that's why I'll, I'll take, I'm, I'm going to fight whoever they put in front of me. But if I had a choice, yeah, for my next ones, I would be like, can I, can I get some rematches? Those would be great. <laughs> Redeem yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. That's cool stuff. All right, so next question uh, it comes from Jack Coyle and his, I keep on wanting to say hashtag, but his Twitter handle is Jack the Toe 2335 and his question is, and it's an answer that I already know, but I'm going to ask it anyway, um, which four horsemen are you and why? Well, the the original Four Horsemen, you know, there was a few different um, guys that, that made up that lineup. Uh, if you go with the original Four Horsemen, where it was, uh, there was Ric Flair and Tully Blanchard and Arn and Ollie Anderson, uh, if you go with those, I was Ollie Anderson. Um, and then at some point, Barry Windham replaced Ollie. And that's the other one. So either Barry Windham or Ole Anderson would be mine. And uh, we, we, you know, we uh, had discussions about who would be Ric Flair. Shayna and Rhonda, um, you know, had to had to fight it out and decide who would be who. And uh, you know, eventually they decided that Rhonda was, you know, Ric Flair and Shayna was Arn. And since Arn and Oli were, you know, they were brothers and everything, and, you know, me and Shane are roll dogs and, and, and best friends, and we were like, okay, so for sure I'm Oli then. If you're Arn, I'm Oli. Uh, and since Barry replaced Oli, then I would have to be Barry Wyndham. Um, so that's that's kind of how he worked that one out. <laughs> that's cool. It all, it all, like, lined up accordingly. Yeah, it really did work out, actually, actually quite well. But uh, honestly, I think that we were kind of, you know, those were just maybe the inspiration. I don't think any of us tried to emulate them directly. It's like this was the inspiration, but we're the four horsemen, and you know we're going to be we're the the first of what we are. So that's the direction we're going in now. That's cool. So okay, next question uh, is from J P Pena, and his Twitter handle is Redskin for Life sixty eight, and he says. What do you feel is the most improved part of your fight game? What is what was it? Can you say it again? It broke up briefly. It says, uh, "What do you feel is the most part, like most improved part of your of your fight game?" Um, I maybe my my takedowns and and my wrestling uh, and my my footwork and my striking. Like, uh, even though I didn't necessarily show it in my last fight. You know, I know myself, and I know the gains I've made uh, in in my striking and my footwork, and uh, my composure when I'm striking uh, is definitely a huge improvement. But uh, I've also made huge gains in in my takedowns and my wrestling because I've been putting a lot of work into that. That's uh, I spent a lot of time when I first started training working a lot of jujitsu, and you know, I I didn't like wrestling because it was hard, you know, and I just never wanted to. 
I never wanted to excel at it because it was it was it was the hardest practice to go to. Um and you know, I'm I'm I've been really trying to play catch up on that and uh and I've learned to love it. I've learned to to love those really hard practices uh that you get in wrestling and um been really working on on you know having good takedowns and having some good throws so that I can dictate where the fight goes and I do think I showed that in my last fight that that area has uh changed a lot and is still improving but uh overall I mean as a fighter I feel like I've I've improved and uh grown a lot and matured a lot and uh you know it's it's not necessarily one thing in particular but um I feel like also my like I said my composure and um, just being comfortable in a in a fight, you know. Uh, I almost think that was part of the problem is I was a little too comfortable in my last fight. I, I had learned to relax and settle down so much that uh, I went too far, you know. Uh, I, I Because before it was like the bell rang and I had one speed. And, uh, you know, sometimes it worked out and sometimes it didn't. But, you know, now I've learned to calm down and see things and, um, and, and, fight smart, but uh, I also know that i got to go back to that fighting bell-to-bell and, and having one speed, and now I can do that as well as see everything and have improved footwork and composure. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good to know. The last question, last fan question, I should say, it actually comes from Gary Pennington. He's on Facebook and on Twitter all the time, and uh, he wanted to know, um, does the close decision from your last fight give you extra motivation going into your fight with Leslie? Uh, yes, I hate decisions. I hate that my last three fights have been decisions. Uh, I despise leaving the the fate of my fight in the judges' hands, um, but it's no one's fault but my own. So what that does is it makes me want to go in there and, and finish it even more. Um, and whether you accomplish that or not, I feel like if you fight that way, it's going to be definitive. Um, and that's what I want. That's my goal is a, a definitive win that nobody can can say anything about. Um, and it that it uh, it definitely gives me motivation. Um, just like I did, you know, when I lost my fight on the show and I came in there against Peggy, I came in wanting to prove something, and that's that tends to be when I fight best. So I feel like that that sets me up well for this fight coming up. You're going in like a, a fresh new person, definitely. That's awesome. Yep. So that's it for the fan questions, and we actually have 10 minutes left of this interview. That 45 minutes went by super quick. Um, I guess we could talk about a little bit of WWE stuff because we know we both love it, so why not? Let's do it. Let's do that. Um, Let me see. What's a good question that I could throw at you right now? Um, What is your initial reaction of Stardust, Cody Rhodes? I loved it. I loved Stardust because I've always really liked Gold Dust. Um, I liked the story behind Gold Dust where it was like, he, I feel like he got thrown this just terrible gimmick, but he made it work. Um, and I watched, I watched this little mini documentary on it too, and like you find out that he's just this big Texas country boy, and he goes out there and he becomes Gold Dust, right? Like um, it was just such a change, and you know he in a in a legendary family in, in the WWE and to come out there and, and make it work like he did. So I was always a huge Gold Dust fan. And uh I remember actually I asked Shayna, I'm like, So what's the deal with Cody Rhodes? Like, you got Gold Dust, but like Cody Rhodes is just Cody Rhodes. Like what's what's his gimmick? And she's like, He's Cody Rhodes, he's the son of Dusty Rhodes, he's that's it. And I was like, Man, that sucks, you know, 'cause it's like he's he he always like I love Cody Rhodes' moveset. Um, he's like a high flying wrestler, but not luchador style. And, uh, I always thought it was really cool. I liked the moves he pulled off and, uh, I hated that, that nothing more was ever really done with him. Um, and, you know, I thought it could be really cool. So when the whole thing went down where, you know, he, he was like, you need a better tag team partner and whatever I'm going to, I was like, I didn't like it. Cause I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this whole thing of them splitting up and him not wrestling. I just don't like it. So when when they were doing the whole thing, you know, like bringing up this new this new partner that you've never heard of, you've never seen before, I'm like, oh god, please let it please let it be Cody doing something. I I'm, I was just like hoping for it. And when he walked out and he had on 
the the outfit and everything. I was like, I love it. I love it. Like I can't wait to see more of him. I'm I'm excited and I think that uh I think they're they might be my new favorite tag team. That's funny because like just like that too, people started talking about the tag team division again too. Like literally that's all it took for people to be like, Oh my god, this is crazy and it, he was trending for like Stardust was trending for like two days and yeah, it was crazy. right away the crowd started a, a let's go Stardust chant. Like immediately when he came out, he hadn't even wrestled yet and people were like already into it. That's that's what WWE is good for, you know. Sometimes they throw loopholes and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, but I think this one definitely did work, so Yeah. I let's agree. talk about the shield really quickly. How do you feel about them being no more? Like, Silva has gone officially. I, I think uh, now because all of them have different entrance music and whatnot. So, oh, why, Seth? Why? I, just, I hated it. I hated it when I saw it. I couldn't, you know. I just, I wasn't ready for the shield. Like, I knew that the shield breaking up was inevitable. Like, you could just feel it coming. Um, but I just, I wasn't ready for it. I didn't want it to be over yet. I really, the, the shield was. They were one of my favorite teams, and um, I just loved everything about them. You know, I love the tactical gear. I love that they walk in, you know, through the audience and their music, and, you know, they just were – they were great. And so when they broke up, I was like, oh, man, I hate this. I don't want them to fall apart and everything. However, I'm actually a really – big fan of of where they're going in their individual directions now um i really like dean ambrose and what he's doing right now like i like his new outfit and i like you know the the stuff that he's doing and where he's going and um roman reigns is amazing he's always one of my favorites and i love that he's like he's still walking out to the shield music and he's still wearing the gear but it's, I mean, he's not the Shield, obviously. He's still just Roman Reigns, but I like that he's stuck with that. Um, and I'm I'm just kind of curious to see what they do with Seth. Um, he actually was my favorite out of out of the Shield, uh, was Seth Rollins. Um, he, he I, I just thought that his moves were cool. I loved when they would do the, the tag team matches and he, you know, when, when Seth would jump in, I was just, you just love it, you know, like when he got that tag and he would just start going off and flying off the ropes and just doing crazy stuff. Like, um, it was actually, I think one of the, it was one of the shield versus the Wyatt matches that he went from just being like just the guy kind of in the background and nobody really paid attention to him. It was like Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. And then that other guy to all of a sudden, like he was just this superhero that was doing this crazy stuff. And I was like, Holy crap. Like this guy's amazing. Like, can you believe this? And then he was killing it on the mic, and like I was, I, I was like, man, Seth is like, he's really winning me over, and he actually became my favorite. And that's why I was like, I hated that he had to be the one to to betray and and stab them in the back, and uh, and I, I really want to see where they where they're going with it, you know. But I feel like I feel like it's good. I feel like it's working. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I, I think it'll work out in the end uh, for all of them. But they're they're amazing, but I am gonna miss the Shield. They were they were awesome. Yeah, they were a good faction that lasted almost three years, and they ran they ran roughshod on the WWE, and it was insane. Even I was like, what is going on? Why did he do that? But I think uh, with him being in the Money in the Bank match, that might maybe make him contender for the title. Who knows? I guess we yeah. have to wait and see. You know for sure. But they want to keep you on the edge of your seat and keep us talking about it and. And and they succeeded, so I suppose they they did what they're they're trying to do because uh, it worked for sure. <laughs> Definitely does. So with that being said, um, with the Money in the Bank match for the title, who is your standout pick for that Money in the Bank? Oh God, you know, I I don't know. Um, I think I think Roman Reigns is gonna win it, but I'm not sure. You know they did the they did the handicap match on SmackDown the other night and won that and you know those are always like a little teaser when you have a pay per view or something coming up so uh, he won that but I don't know I don't know what they're gonna do I, like I said I think Roman Reigns is gonna win it but you just really never know I wouldn't be upset if Bray Wyatt won <laughs> um, I think that that would be okay and uh, I don't know. It was. It's. We'll. We'll just have to see. But my heart wants Bray Wyatt to win, but I think Roman Reigns is going to win. 
Yeah, I think that's true, too. I think they're definitely trying to push Roman Reigns. Something that me and my friend talked about was, like, what if Bray Wyatt won the title and then, you know, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan won yes. the acting titles? And then yep. all three of them would have it, you know? Like, my my best friend is a fan of the Usos, and he's like, I really don't want that to happen because, you know, they've only had it for a little while. But if anything, it would be it would still be cool to see, you know? So we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I would too. not be upset at all if, if the Wyatt family had all the belts for – even if it was just briefly, you know? Even if it was just for a little bit, I would not be upset about that. I think that – I think that they're – a a brilliant gimmick and I love what they do and I, I, I love watching them wrestle. I mean they're always always one of the highlights just to get to watch the Wyatt wrestle. And Luke Harper honestly has really won me over. Um I used to not really I used to not really care about Eric Rowan or Luke Harper. I was like, well, you know, they're like the big guys that are that are with Bray Wyatt. But Bray Wyatt was the one that I was, you know, I thought was amazing. But uh Luke Harper, the more I watch him wrestle, like I get seriously excited about watching him wrestle and I, especially if it's a singles match I'm like I love these like I love watching him watching him wrestle and um he's he does some crazy stuff for a big dude you know he doesn't look that athletic but I mean he does some he does some pretty impressive stuff for a guy his size and uh I love I love the way he works the crowd I love his like he uh he just totally is that character and he sells it and he he makes it work and He's creepy, and he, you know, he just has this possessed look on it, and he makes the crazy noises when he, you know, I just love it. I love the way he works the crowd when he, when he, when he's out there, and um, he's definitely won me over. So I, I would love to see them have the tag team titles, even if just for a little bit. Yeah, it would definitely be a sight to see. Now we actually have a little bit less than a minute left in this interview, so I want to give you the floor if you want to say anything to your fans out there or plug in your social media outlets the floor is yours um yeah i definitely uh want you know anybody that's listening you know follow me on social media twitter at jessamine duke instagram same thing uh i try to stay pretty active on those especially instagram it's my favorite um and you know want to give a shout out to uh quest training uh who, who supported me a lot in my last fight and has supported me a lot in this fight coming up uh, and I want to, of course, as always, thank the fans for their support or not, you know, <laughs> either way. Um, but, you know, I want to thank them for being interested in talking about me. But especially the fans that support me um, through Thick and Thin, you know, you guys are the reason that I can keep fighting and that I love this sport and I love what I do and uh, and you make it a passion for me. So thank you to all of them. And thank you, Vanessa, for having me on your show and asking me to be a part of it. It's, I've wanted to actually do it for a while. Every time Shana does an interview with you, she always brags about how much fun it is. So <laughs> I understand oh, what she was talking about now because this has been a lot of fun. So thank you so much for having me, and I can't wait to do it again. Well, thank you for taking the time out of, like I said, out of your busy schedule. And on behalf of, you know, me and everyone else at DTRT Wrestling, we really do appreciate uh, you and Shane are constantly giving love to the site. Uh, it's really helped us in tremendous ways, so we appreciate it. And, of course, we wish you the best of luck on your upcoming fight. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. You do the same. You take care, and have a happy birthday again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right, have a good one. <laughs> 